Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and this is the Skyview Pro go-to uh, equatorial mount. It's a kit consisting of the Skyview Pro mount itself and the go-to motors and hand controller that we've installed. So I wanted to show you how it gets set up, um, and I think you'll find it's actually fairly simple. It doesn't require too many tools. Actually, all the tools you need are included in the system. So let's start from the beginning, show you how the mount goes up, and then how the motors and the hand controller are attached to it. All right, well, let's get started. All right, so here we have all the components to the Skyview Pro go-to system. Um, on this side here is the mount itself, tripod, obviously, the head. This is the accessory tray that goes in between the tripod legs. On the side here, the counterweights, the counterweight shaft, and the center support tray. Uh, over there in front, some of the little small uh, pieces, the latitude adjustment bolts, slow motion knobs, the dovetail bar and it comes with a manual to uh, help you assemble it. And then over here, this is the components to the go-to kit. It comes with a manual for assembly and how to use the hand controller, and then all the various parts and pieces you need for assembly of the go-to system itself. All right, well, the first step is to uh, assemble your tripod. So that's just a simple matter of opening the legs up to as, about as far as they'll go, make sure they're nice and widely spread and the tripod is level. And then your center support shaft, if it's not already installed uh, in the tripod, install it now. The part with the little shoulder goes up through the bottom. So I'll just thread it in there. And it's capped if it just sits there. That allows you to attach the tripod head to the mount, or to the tripod. What you're gonna first do is locate the little pin on the side here, that's your north facing pin. That goes in between these two uh, azimuth uh, slow motion control knobs. So you first wanna back these out so there's a nice gap between them and the pin fits in between the bolts. All right, so that's wide enough now. It just sits on top with a pin right between the two bolts. Hold it uh, with one hand while you tighten up the center support shaft with the other. Once that's done, you can then tighten down the little azimuth uh, adjustment knobs. Next, the latitude adjustment bolts get threaded into the mount, uh, both on the north side and on the south side. They're the same length, so it really doesn't matter which one you use. Just thread them in. And then if you want to save yourself a step later, adjust the knobs so they position the mount at your correct latitude. So here in the San Francisco, San Jose Bay area, we're at 37 degrees north latitude. It's a push-push system, so it's butting up against both sides of a block inside. So when both of them tighten up, they're not gonna move. So loosen one up, tighten the other, and then just adjust the latitude scale until you get the right number. So I gotta loosen this one and tighten this one, and you can probably see it moving downwards. So I'm gonna move it to about 37, 38 degrees, right about there, and then lock both of them down so it doesn't move up or down. Next is the installation of the accessory tray below the tripod, well, in between the tripod legs. Uh, first, again, make sure that your tripod legs are nice and spread open all the way to their stops. Then loosen the knob here, take it off. The tray goes up through the shaft and then presses against each leg. Install the washer back on and then the large lock knob. Hand tight is all you need. You don't need to really clamp down on this one. Next is the counterweight shaft. Uh, first, make sure that this little locking collar is threaded all the way down towards the center of the uh, counterweight shaft itself, not up higher. So all the way down to the bottom and then thread it in until it's snug and then that locking washer thread it back upwards towards the mount and that locks it into place. Uh, this is called a toe saver for a very specific reason. Uh, once you've got the counterweights reinstalled make sure you put the toe saver back on because if somebody in the dark says hey what's this knob and loosens the counterweight uh, lock knob your counterweight's going to fall down and you'll be very unhappy. Uh, so once that's off the counterweights go on. There is an up and a down. If you look on each counterweight, there's a narrow hole on one side and it's a little wider on the other. The wider side goes down facing the toe saver. 
Now just slide the counterweights on and I like to put the large one on first because the lock knob is up high on it and uh, well first of all if there's nothing on top of your mount slide the counterweight all the way up towards the top and then when you put the other one on the two knobs won't interfere with each other if you put the large counterweight on above the smaller one. Lock them both down. Don't forget the toe saver that goes back on and you're ready to proceed. The next step are the slow motion knobs. One will go on the right ascension shaft here and then the other goes on the declination shaft up above. You have your choice as to which side of each axis you want to put them on. Uh, if you're just setting up for the first time and you're not sure, it doesn't really matter. Just put them on one side and you can adjust that later. Uh, they are fairly tight, they're a snug fit, so when you put them on you need to press in. And you'll notice there's a flat on the shaft itself, and then if you look at the shape of the slow motion knob, there's a little nub coming out on the bottom side, it doesn't make it exactly round. That little nub section, that's where the flat goes uh, when you uh, press on the slow motion knobs. So press the declination knob on, and right ascension one is on, and now you're ready to proceed to the next step. Two last things to attach to the mount before you're ready to put the telescope on or proceed to the uh, motor installation. The little cap that covers the polar housing here, uh, it's not really necessary, but it just kind of finishes the look and makes it uh, look like it's a bit more clean installation. Uh, your polar scope, an optional polar scope can go below that if you wanted. And then the uh, dovetail mount, depending on how you're going to be attaching a telescope, uh, the scope or the mount comes with an 8 inch. And that just slides in here and bolts down with a lock screw. It's as simple as that. All right, well, now that you've got the mount assembled, it's time to install the go to system. Uh, the mount was the easy part because there's no tools necessary. This is a little bit more in depth. Uh, you need a couple of tools. Um, actually, everything is included with it. Um, but it's a little bit smaller pieces. There's more pieces. So let's go through it step by step and I'll show you how it works. The first step is to attach the RA uh, motor drive. And in order to do that, you actually have to disassemble a few things. I know I already put it fully together. That was for assembly purposes and to show you how it works. But you're going to want to take off the counterweights and the counterweight shaft. Next, you're going to want to take off the RA uh, cover housing. And there's a little tiny Phillips screw, and we include a Phillips screwdriver to do it. Uh, you have to just get down below it. it. It might actually be easier to take off the latitude adjustment bolt, the, the north one, to do this. So that comes off. Make sure you don't lose that little screw in there because it is very tiny. One last thing you'll want to remove before attaching the motor is the right ascension slow motion knob. This one comes off and is actually no longer used. You'll be using the slow motion uh, through the hand controller and motor system uh, from this point on. Now you're ready to install the right ascension motor. Uh, and you can identify the motor, uh, the right ascension version at least, because this has a four pin connector coming out the side of it. The, the other motor, the declination motor, does not have this uh, four pin cable coming out. You're going to use this long screw and the Allen wrench to insert the screw from the back end up through the shaft and then directly into this little hole on the side here. And then you just want to have it fairly loose. I mean, snug a little bit, but you're going to be readjusting it later, so don't really crank down the, the tightness on that screw. Next, take one of the small brass gears and you're going to attach it onto the telescope shaft here. Uh, I had to lower the right ascension motor down a little bit so it will clear when I put this on. And if you notice, there's two set screws on the gear. One of them should go onto the flat of the uh, shaft coming out of the, the, the gear on the mount. Otherwise, it won't really grab it and bite it tight. So it just slips over it. And you're going to be using the smaller gear down below. So make sure the gear that you just assembled is about in line with the smaller gear. You can make minor adjustments in, in a minute here, but uh, you're attaching it to the smaller gear, not the larger gear behind it. So once that's on there, I'm going to tighten down the set screw. First one against the flat, and then the other one. All right, and there you have it. Now you're ready to mesh the motor up against the gear that you've just installed and tighten it down from the back. So remember what I said, the gear that you just installed meshes with the smaller of the two gears, not the bigger one, the smaller one. So I've already got my Allen wrench in position in there, and I'm just going to push the motor up into place, and then with a little bit of tension against the gear, I'm going to tighten down the screw from the back, and it'll snug it into place. 
Now you're going to want to check that you didn't put too much tension on there. I can still turn the gear by hand. It's snug, but it moves smoothly. If you really cram the motor up against it and tighten it down, the mesh is going to be too tight and the motors will struggle to move. So it's a little bit of trial and error. You'll, uh, you'll attach it. You might realize, oh, it's a little too loose. I got to move it up closer or maybe it's a little too tight. So you'll get a feel for it as you just rotate it right there. And that feels nice and smooth. So I think I'm good to go. Let me just snug it down that last little bit to make sure it's going to stay in position. We include a small packet of grease uh, with the system to apply to the gears of the, uh, of the motor. Uh, that'll just help keep the gears lubricated and moving nice and smooth. So uh, I'd say this is a good stage to do it when the motor housing is off and it's easy to get to. Uh, you can use a little toothpick. I'm just going to use the end of uh, the small Allen wrench and then wipe it off later. Um, but you don't need much. Just a little dollop in between where the gears are going to mesh. And that's pretty much it. Just a little tiny dab here and there. Um, and then as the motors spin around, they'll uh, spread the grease around uh, through all of the gears. Now you're ready for the RA motor housing. And the first thing to do is install the little four pin port into the receptacle on the housing that completes the electronic connection. Just line up the holes and squeeze it together. And then the housing slides over the rails on the side, just like the original housing that you took off did. I've pulled off the latitude adjustment knob just to make it easier to get this thing on. And then lastly, take your little screw that came off of the other housing and then reinstall it back in the bottom to hold the housing onto the mount itself. All right, well now you're ready for the deck motor. And again, same thing as RA, you're gonna take off the slow motion knob and you're not gonna use it again because the uh, hand controller and the motors will be utilized for a slow motion control. So put that aside. Uh, first step is to put the small brass gear on and you're gonna put it on the left side as you're facing the gearbox. So you've got the two screws in the middle holding the gearbox on. The gear goes on the left side and same thing, you want to put one of these little set screws against the flat and one against the round body. Just back them off a little bit so it slips all the way in. And then tighten it back down. Now, since you don't know exactly where the gearbox, the motor box is going to be attached, you're probably going to be repositioning this here in a minute. So I'm just going to put it about halfway down and I'm not going to tighten it down very much. I'm just going to put it on snugly so it doesn't fall off, but you will be readjusting this out and in to mesh with the motor gear itself. This is the deck motor uh, and it's identified because it's all black. There's no wire coming out of it like there was with the RA uh, motor. There's a cap covering the gears on the deck housing. It might already be installed uh, out of the box. So if that's the case, you want to take it off. It's just, it's easier to see the mesh of the gears when this thing is off. So the first thing I would do is just take these two little screws and remove the housing cover. So once that's off, you can see the gears themselves. All right, now that the gearbox cover is off, you're ready to attach the motor to the housing. It uses this smaller uh, attachment screw with a, a little wa lock washer and a standard washer. So make sure both of them are, are present on the screw itself. Screw goes through the top little flange on the housing of the mount and then it's going to screw into the uh, receptacle on the motor itself. And when I do that, I want to make sure that the gears are going to be meshing, remember, smaller gear, not the larger gear on the motor. Uh, in case you didn't quite get the right position of the gear when you installed it on the mount, you might have to slide that out a little bit uh, before they'll mesh uh, properly. And then just before it gets snug, take a look at it and see where your mesh is. Uh, but like I said, you might want to move that gear out a little bit so it meshes properly with the smaller gear. All right, right about there. And again, lightly press down against it so you're meshing the motors, not too tight because you don't want them to bind up. And then snug down the attachment screw. I can still turn the gears by hand. It's snug, but it's smooth. So I think that's the proper mesh. Again, before putting the little cover over the gears, let's put a little bit of grease on the gears themselves, just like you did with the right ascension gearbox. A little goes a long way, so you really don't need too much. Now you're ready to attach the housing again. All right, it's as simple as that.
The next step is to uh, install the motor control box onto the tripod leg and then attach the wires to the motors. So first step is the little holster for it. It snaps into place around the metal part of the leg. Uh, it's probably best to put this on the side closest to the ports on the RA housing. That way you're not wrapping the wires all the way around the mount. So snap it on. The motor control box just slides in place. Attach one end of one of the cables to the top of the motor control box. Just line up the pins so they fit in the right orientation. The other end of that cable goes to the RA in on the RA housing. And same thing, line up the pins. The other cable goes from the deck out up to the deck in on the motor housing. So just remember deck out to deck in. And then up on the deck motor itself. Next is the installation of the hand controller. It goes on one of the other legs, so I'll just do it on this next one right around the corner here. I'd like to put it above the accessory tray. That way if it gets a little loose, it won't sink any lower than the, where the accessory tray sits. Wrap the Velcro around through the buckle, and then back through the other side of the buckle. Snug it down, and then just rotate it into place. The hand controller itself plugs into the port on the side, not the center port. Actually, you won't be able to do it in the other one. It's not the right size. So there's only one spot it plugs in there. It sits in place and then wraps around and attaches into the hand controller port. All right, well, after that was done, I reinstalled the counterweight shaft, put the counterweights back on. You're ready to put your telescope on top and start observing the night sky. So, as you can see, there's a, a bunch of steps involved in getting the GoTo system onto it, but it really isn't all that difficult. It just takes a couple of minutes to, uh, to make sure you got everything put in the right place. All right, well, there you have it, the Skyview Pro GoTo uh, Equatorial Mount. Thank you very much. Clear skies.